Everything feels a little bit different these days. It's been a year of disruptions in our daily life. How we gather, who we gather, when we gather, it's all a little different right now. But maybe those disruptions have actually helped us lean into what matters most, the things that we hold on to. And even though our gatherings might look a little different this year, it doesn't have to make them any less meaningful. And it doesn't mean that God is any less present in those moments. Most importantly, different doesn't have to mean boring. We can actually create celebration in the midst of the chaos. I'm Emily, and this is Jess, and this is Katie, and you might recognize us from The Gathering Home. And we're here today to share with you how to make your gatherings for the rest of this year exactly what they need to be. And all it's gonna take from you is just a little bit of love and a little bit of creativity. It's just like these charcuterie boards. All three of us have a matching board. And when you look at them to begin with, it's just like a blank canvas. But it's what we're gonna add to this board that is actually gonna make our gathering exactly what it needs to be. It's that little bit of extra love and that little bit of creativity. And what you're going to find is these are all just a little bit different, but they're gonna be exactly what our gathering is looking for. One way I've found to make gatherings more meaningful during this time is to be more intentional about how I create space. This is the planning that takes place before the gathering. It's choosing a setting, picking a menu, and selecting meaningful details. It usually starts in the heart and grows to be something you carry out with your own style, talents, and resources. Whether it's simple or elaborate, the most important thing is to make people feel that they're loved. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the gathering. When I think about gathering, there's always two things that I love to think about. One is the people, and the second is the why. So let's talk about the people for a minute. I think as you start planning any gathering, one of the things that you should think about is who should be there? Who needs to come and why do they need to come? Um, what do they need from you? How will you show them your love? It's so important as you're putting that list together just to be thinking about each of those individual people and what it is they need in their life right now. The second thing I like to think about is the why. I love for there to be meaning behind the gathering, behind why we're getting together. Um, the meaning has to do with what is in the innermost part of your heart, and it's what is gonna help those people be lifted, lifting their hearts and actually helping them to live better. I love a scripture that says, it's found in Matthew, and it says, where two or three are gathered, I will be in the midst of them. And I love the thought of that. How will Christ be a part of your gathering? How could that spirit of Christ, whether it's the healing or the welcoming in or the thought you belong here, there's room for you at this table, how could that be part of your mentality as you are putting your gathering together? Now that you've created the space and gathered the people, it's time to consider what you will give. Your gift is gonna be unique to the way that you love and serve others. It's choosing connection over perfection, which is as simple as just inviting your neighbors in from the front porch, despite your house being a little bit messy. It's leaving dishes in the sink and joining the conversation after dinner. It's giving all that you have and offering your best, even when you fear it's maybe not gonna be enough. We can meet people where they are and love them the way that Christ does. True connection requires vulnerability, but we can't expect people to show up as they are if we can't first show up how we are. This is hard, and it's something that I have to work on all the time. But I've noticed that as I think of myself less and think of others more, that God has multiplied my efforts, and he'll do that for you too. As you embrace the idea of doing things a little differently this season, 
The question isn't what will you miss out on or what will be lost. The real question to ask is what can I bring to the table? What gifts do I already have that will bless the lives of others? Maybe you will create a charcuterie board and you will fill it with all of the things your family loves. Or maybe you'll take the time to connect with someone over a video call instead. Whatever you do this season together, we hope you'll do it with love and intention.